Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the Sharpshooters Podcast. I am your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Sharp. This is our first official interview. So I had to get somebody from the city, ladies and gentlemen. I had if I was gonna do an interview, I had to get somebody from the city first. And I'm so grateful that uh he decided to come on. And I would like to introduce us. He's a writer, a director, a nine-time NAACP Image Award nominee and future winner and a future Academy Award winner, Tuskegee's very own Mr. Jewel Taylor, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. <laughs> oh yeah, man. What's going on? Oh, you know, I'm chilling, man. I mean, technically, I was nominated nine times, but you know. I know, I know. <laughs> but hey, it's your film, so yeah. You get the nine times on there, so <laughs> the director get all the uh, the uh, companies oh, get all the credit and all that. At all, man. I'm just the humble servant of the movie, man. I'm just trying to help everybody make the movie the way it's supposed to be made, you know. Oh yeah, man. So tell me about uh, how it was like growing up in Tuskegee, man. Oh man, yeah, it's 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 uh, <laughs> it's crazy that like you know before we jumped on here, just telling me. That uh, you know how your mama was my 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 Cub Scout leader. You know it was uh, I mean like you know I I, I loved it in general just because you know I had a pretty weird upbringing in general in terms of you know the things I got interested in, but also like because I mean I just grew up like loving video games and anime even when I was you know. Cause I got older, my brother's like 16 years older than me. So everything he liked, I liked, so, you know, he was playing Zelda, I was playing Zelda, you know. And tell me about it. Balancing that with like, you know, just being outside, you know what I'm saying? Going to my homeboy house, he used to live in Shorter. He had like a four wheeler, three wheeler. <laughs> four wheelers, you know? Oh man, <laughs> you right. got some memories right there. Yeah, you know, so it's like a little bit of that, you know, outdoorsy kind of upbringing, you know, balance with like, you know, staying inside playing like NES and then Super Nintendo and Genesis, you know what I'm saying? And so it was a, it was a pretty like, you know, ro- I would say a robust way to grow up, you know what I'm saying? Like you look back and I'm like glad that I was able to kind of experience like a pretty, you know, pastoral lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, so, because obviously, you know, you go other places and it's like, you know, there's not really, you know, well, you go other places in the South, yeah, but like, you know, you go to LA, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's like, people not going to know what it's like to like chase rabbits, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so, got a good like mix, you know what I'm saying, of like chasing rabbits and then, you know, riding four wheelers and like just kind of doing outdoors and kind of stuff. And I was really, really doing. At the same time, still like you know, come in, come back in the house and like play video games all night. So, I mean, I, I, you know, I wouldn't trade it. Man, who are you telling? Because I know you used to have a Nintendo 64. Man, you used to have a Mario Kart, uh, Super Mario Party, Zelda, and Pokemon yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, when I when but, I moved to Montgomery, then it got real crazy. I moved to Montgomery in fourth grade. And then, you know, that's when the 64 drop. Like, I moved to Montgomery in 96. <laughs> the 64 drop in 96. That's when all hell broke loose for real. <laughs> boy, everybody had one, boy. And that's well. That Mario Party used to hit for real, dog. Like, Mario Party, Mario Party 2 was the one, though. Mm-hmm. The one. Yeah, because we was heavy on that, man. I'm talking about I used to play that all night, especially doing sleepovers, bro. I ain't getting no sleep. Oh yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent, bro. Like that, that's what I miss. You know what I'm saying? Like playing basketball, you know, sports outside all day. You know, go to woods and mm. I got a paintball gun or something. You know, <laughs> then you come in the house all night and play sixty four or play, you know, PS one or Sega Saturn. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the Sega Saturn, boy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you know. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, oh I'm, my god! In a, in a gaming rabbit hole, but you mm. know. You can ask LaJuan. Shout out to my boy LaJuan. Oh, yeah, man. You can ask LaJuan. He'll tell you. Oh, yeah, man. He a real one, too. Shout out to him, dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. 
So, shoot, when you uh moved to uh, Montgomery, where you uh went to high school? At? Uh, so I went to uh, I went to Georgia Washington for junior high school, which was like in Pike Road. You mm -hmm. know, and then I went to Lamp for high school. So, you know, back then, high school was right. like 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. You know, Montgomery, mm -hmm. was like, ninth grade was junior high back then, you know. So, yeah, because like, BTW was like eighth grade. Uh, I know my brother and them last year in 2004, it was like they was the last eighth grade class to uh, graduate from uh, BTW. Oh, that yeah. was, no, the 2004 class was the last class, but to uh have the eighth grade at BTW. So yeah, I remember the old day. Yeah, so you know. Went to uh you know went from St. Joseph and mm -hmm. to Georgia, Washington to Lamp. Man, and the crazy thing about it, I'm gonna talk to you, bro. It didn't take me so you know, of course, Lamp is like right down the street from uh St. Jude. Oh yeah, honest, my honest, too, you know. Huh? And my sister went to St. Jude. Oh yeah, man. Shout out to the Jew. <laughs> man, I already closed that. Long story, man. <laughs> man. That's a long story, bro. I still don't even know the truth to that right there. But it, they uh, made it a charter school now. Uh, is so it still I, called St. Jude? Nah, it's called something totally different. I don't even know what it's called, man. It, oh. it, it's still the building. It still got the name. Uh, well, of course, it's in center block. Uh, it got the name up there in grain, but it's called something else. I don't know what it's been. It's just a charter school. <laughs> but I remember, bro, I swear to God, uh, it took me till, I graduated in 2009. It took me till graduation night to know what LAMP was. And I did not know LAMP was right down the street the whole time. So coming to Montgomery, to Tes coming from Tuskegee to Montgomery every day, I had no idea. Well, when no I was at Lamp, it looked like a trap house. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was at Lamp, it was, a, you know, <laughs> like they, I think they told the building that, you know, the one I went to, it was like, mm -hmm. house. like it was, it didn't, you could drive right by it and I know the school was so small, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah, right. see, it was, uh, see it was, I didn't even know that. Now I like, oh, uh, cause I know, I forgot the name of the road. You go straight down and before you bust that right, like, if you don't look to the right before you get on the interstate, you will miss it. Oh, yeah. And that's how I was like, bro, I never looked that way. I was just like, oh, okay. I just never knew what land was. I knew where everything else was at. Oh, yeah. But why you didn't go to the Jew? I don't know, man. <laughs> I, <laughs> I to my sister, you know what I'm saying? My sister went to St. Jude. She graduated like 99. You know, so I was like, I spent a lot of time at St. Jude, but. Oh, yeah. Just when she was in high school, but I don't know. I had to, I had to do something different. You know what's funny? Though? I didn't want to go to Lamp either. Where you want? I wanted to go to Brutech. Oh, Brutech. <laughs> My mama made me go to Lamp because it was the academic magnet. You know, I wanted to go mm -hmm. to, and I wanted, I wanted to do video game design. I wanted to make video games. So I mm -hmm. wanted to it because I wanted to get into like coding and stuff like that. And my mama was like. Nah, you know what I'm <laughs> Yeah, man, trust me. Well, my mom forced me to, so I understand. I about to say, so when you graduated LAMP, now I remember you saying something about uh, you wanted to code and stuff. Did you want to do that when you uh, went to Florida? I didn't want to code. I just wanted to, I wanted to get the prerequisite skill set to do video game design. Okay. Not like specifically like wanted to do computer science like that. But when I went to Florida, I wanted to, uh, yeah, I, wanted, I still want to do video game design. I was an art major, though. You know, they didn't have, a, um, they didn't have like a program that was a real, like one to one with game design. The closest thing they had was like this kind of animation style program. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you had to, it was basically half engineering, half art. But you okay. had to, you had to um, apply with a portfolio to get into the actual major so in your first two your first two years you had to be a fine arts major basically and then mm -hmm. the second two years you had to uh that's when you got into like the animation classes and stuff and so i had put off my um i had put off all my engineering classes for like this later part of college because i hated i hated math you so, know uh and so i didn't get into the major but i you know mm -hmm. I, my portfolio was not accepted 
So I didn't I didn't get into the major I was trying to get into. You said fine arts, man. So that's like uh so you had to do like uh some acting and improv and all that stuff. Well, no, no, no. I mean like fine arts, like sculpture, figure drawing. Oh, okay, okay. You know, still life, oh. like like art, like an art major. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, like a generic visual arts major. So like drawing, painting, sculpting, that, that kind of art. And then um, but again, that's not like I didn't go to college necessarily to be an art major. I was trying to get into this digital yeah. art science major. So it's like, again, it's like, you know, they didn't have nothing that was really like video game design. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, dead said I was going to Florida no matter what anyway. So e- even though it was probably other universities that had programs that were more probably aligned with getting into like video game design. I was like, I'm going to Florida and whatever major they got is the closest to making games. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, okay. Well, I was about to say, so what made you uh, get into moves? How how did that transition go from there? Well, I'm talking I, about why you was there. Because I was a bad art student. <laughs> you know. So, because <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, man, and that shit, that shit hurt. Uh, Kira Toriyama just died. You know, that shit. That's probably the most influential thing on my childhood with Dragon Ball Z. Kira Toriyama just died. Mm-hmm. I, I got into art. Rest in peace to the goat. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got into art drawing Dragon Ball. You know, and mm-hmm. before that, I mean, I drew like Tekken and Street Fighter and stuff like that. But I really kind of started like trying to draw my own manga. And, you know, got into it like on some nerd shit like kind of in the mid late 90s, you know what I'm saying, when Planet Namek was popping, you know what I'm saying, the old <laughs> way, all the pictures and stuff. And mm-hmm. then when it came on Toonami, it was like, you know, it was, I was I was already a fanatic by the time. Yeah. Before it even came on Toonami, I was already like in the weeds, but... Uh, you know, uh, man, you make even though you older than me, man, you making me feel old by naming all these things that I was so into, man, <laughs> as a kid, dog. I mean, oh my god, when you said you're not. Oh yeah, come on, man. You know, but like I would, I would draw. I used to draw. You know, I mean, even just drawing like Chrono Trigger back in the day. You know, I used to draw video games, and then like I got into drawing, uh, like. I used to draw like Tekken and like video game stuff. And then like when I really got into Dragon Ball, I started drawing that and that. And so I was very much a, like a more of a cartoonist, so to speak. Like I drew more like manga, anime style stuff. So mm-hmm. when I got to college, like that's not what you're doing as an art student. You're doing like, you know, still life, figure drawing, charcoal, rubbery races. Like it's like a different kind of art. Mm-hmm. I was I wasn't a great art student. Like I, I could I could draw Goku very well, for for example. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I'm not gonna be able to just sit here and just like you know, full arm draw with charcoal, you know what I'm saying? So I was a I was a mediocre art student at best. And then I did a project for one of my classes where we had um they gave us an assignment to like collaborate with a known artist, right? So you know, for example, like, you know, Jackson Pollock, whatever, you know, some mm-hmm. Picasso, pick a, a, a well-known artist. But, you know, we had all these different artists and you pick the name out the hat and your project was supposed to be like half your collaborate, like your contribution. And mm-hmm. half your contribution. So you're supposed to collaborate with a with an artist. And so, like, you're supposed to kind of put a little your style, a little lay style. And so it was all it was it wasn't just one style of art. though. So it was like. You know, like Frida Kahlo and you know Roy Lichtenstein, had all these artists who had like totally different like mediums and aesthetics. And so I, I ended up picking this dude, David Shrigley, who was like a um, he's like a satirist. So he he makes these like irreverent photos and he does a lot of kind of like stick figure drawings. So I was like, damn, I picked the one person out the <laughs> box that already draws stick figures. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. he already has a very simple aesthetic. That other people had like you know sculptors and Chuck Close who does like like photorealistic drawings, um, and I was like, damn, what I'm gonna do? Like this, you know, I, I got the one dude who already got a basic drawing style, so I'm like, I don't know how I'm. I was supposed to add the basic drawing to the equation, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, it's, but he, he's also like a satirist, so everything he makes is like super irreverent, you know, like that kind of thing. So I was like, man, I'm gonna. 
I'm gonna make my my hat. I'm gonna make a short film. I had never made a short film, so I was like, you know what? My contribution is I'm gonna make a short film out of with his style. Mm-hmm. So I just made a short film. It's like the only time I had like the best project in the class. I'm like, man, shit was kind of fun. I'm low. Made this like super ratchet short film. Everybody was laughing. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just bookmark this in the back of my head. Like I like I like doing that. It was fun. You know, and I was like, okay, the, the class responded to this. I actually did a good job on this project. So when I didn't get accepted, I, one other thing, I had met my homeboy, uh, who I'm still like tight with to this day. He's like my brother to this day. And he wanted to be a movie director, randomly, one of my classmates. Mm-hmm. So I had did that, and then he, you know, he started talking to me like, oh man, like you should get in the film. I was like, man, what's, you know, <laughs> I, I, I love movies, but like I, you know, I, as you know, I didn't have no film people around me growing up. Of like, course. Had anybody I knew who was in the industry, so I was like, "Oh, you know what? What does that entail? Being a movie director? You know, like I'm mean, oh, like, yeah. I, I had a sense of it, but like, you know, uh, Steven Spielberg and Martin Scorsese and Quentin Tarantino. Like, I know who directors are. I know what they do very broadly, but not like specifically. Oh like, yeah. Okay, like, well, how do you know how I make the how I make the play? I kind of enjoyed making that little short, you know. So me and him just started like making little shorts and stuff. And so when I didn't get accepted into my major, I had like two years of credits that I couldn't use. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, I'm kind of assed out on the low. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm going to be a generic art major, which is cool, but I'm not a great artist. So it's like, it ain't cool. You know? <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with being an art major if you're an artist. Yeah. Like, I'm artistic, but I, don't, I wouldn't call myself an artist. Like, you I, have a degree and wouldn't be able to do nothing with it for real. Like, for real. Nasty. Like, you know what I'm saying? They was, they was, you know, a lot of them are like doing crazy things now in terms of just like a lot of my graphic designers and like, you know, mm-hmm. only kind of do a lot of cool stuff, you know, and like, like I can't, I mean, I ain't gonna beat none of them out for no real work, you know. Oh, no. so I like, man, I gotta save these credits, you know, so I got like 60 credits and I gotta figure out what to do because otherwise I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna be in college for like six years, you know what I'm saying? I'm oh, yeah. Cool. Man, why the shit at this rate? So, <laughs> I was like, man, hmm, maybe I could finesse like an interdisciplinary degree, tell them I'm gonna be a movie director, you know. So that's like what I did. I like applied for interdisciplinary. I told them I need all these art classes, but like, you know, direct, you gotta have art, you know, you gotta, you know, I just you know, <laughs> finesse them over a little tail, you know, like, <laughs> I, you know, and then I took a year of uh, theater and I took mm-hmm. a year Film analysis, like English, like a, a year, of the, a year of English classes that were like film analysis oriented, and then a year of theater. And I, you know, I, I graduated almost on time. You know, I, <laughs> I, I managed to save the majority of my credits. You know, so that's how I kind of ended up with a film degree. You know, like man, I don't know, I can't really get a job with this degree unless I get. I guess I got to go try to be a filmmaker because I just like finessed a degree in film. But I, you know, I didn't really think I was, um, I didn't really think I was going to be, like, I didn't have no formal training. I didn't, like, really do, I I did it on the side, like, as a hobby, you know. Mm -hmm. But I always enjoyed writing, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I always felt like English was, like, kind of where I was most comfortable, but I didn't want to be an English major, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just graduated, came back to Bama, was chilling, and then, you know, from there I kind of got... A little just impatient after you know, you know, me and my homeboy the one, you know, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. video games every day. You know, what I'm saying so. I was like, man, I gotta do something. I gotta, I gotta actually find out how to really make some money. <laughs> when reality set in, <laughs> man. Reality started sitting. Yeah, yeah. I gotta goddamn get a job. Man. <laughs> that one. So is is that the reason why? Is that the reason why you went to uh, film school at uh, USC? Yeah. I, I, my last semester at um, Florida, uh, the summer because I went, I went for a fifth year. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't save all my credits. And so, my fifth year going in, I had a homeboy that I had met. He was like, "Man, I'm a BPA in New York this summer. Come to New York and just like I get you on some sets." I was like, "All right." So I went to New York, spent the summer in New York. 
and it took about a month, but then like after about a month, he got he, he got me some PA work. So I, I I had saw what it was like to 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 PA, you know what I'm saying? So you know, asking people to cross the street, like you know, like really just like you know, kind of entry level. Like you you own the crew, but like barely, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You just on the outskirts of it, you know. And obviously, like without the PAs nothing runs right like you know like if the pas weren't there and when i say barely i mean in the eyes of like the people who run the set you know what I'm saying? oh yeah not like i mean because you know ain't no set without pas so they but, basically like the runners just run and go handle they, everything they the blood they the blood that keeps <laughs> circulating <laughs> circulating people they make they run they do everything pas do everything right and so i was and like get yeah, the least credit <laughs> least credit you know what i'm saying and so i was uh you know i was doing pa work and just kind of wondering like okay what like this is my only real kind of viable option that or film school one of the two you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so i didn't see necessarily myself moving to new york i like like i didn't even like new york until the very end i started to like it and then um i was like man you know, how I'm going to get from there to, like, if I'm going to really do it, then it's like, of course, I would love to, like, be a movie director one day. Uh, and so I was like, I, don't, I, I can see, like, the path kind of pushes you toward being an AD, a first, uh, assistant director. Mm-hmm. Just a, like a different path. And you can get to, you can get anywhere from PA, even directing. But it's it, it streamlines you towards a few specific jobs. And the more I got familiar with the jobs that it was streamlining me towards, the more I was like, man, let me just see if I can go to film school. Let me, let me at least try, you know, put a like a earnest effort to like go and try to like really kind of study for a little bit and, and be around other filmmakers. And so that's what I ultimately was like, let me just let me apply to some film school, see what happens, you know. Okay. Yeah, man, because I think because I wonder why. Cause the way you sound like you just like uh, I'm just trying to get this uh degree done and all that. Cause I was trying to figure out why you uh went to uh, USC and uh what um uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, that wasn't. I was just trying to get no degree by the time I went to USC. I went to USC with, with a little bit more in, in specific intent. In the mm-hmm. Okay, okay. I went to Florida because like I've, yep. I've been a gator just forever, so I, you know. I ain't gonna even get on that, man. I'm gonna go to Florida. It is what it is. <laughs> Bama fan or something? Yeah, man. Roll time, man. Yeah, All so day, every day, man. Yeah, yeah my partner, uh, he a Florida Gators fan, <laughs> and I, I hate, I, I, I hate, man. I hated y'all so bad, bro. When y'all was, uh, when y'all had Tebow, Percy Harvin, all them boys oh, down. And then y'all had Joe Kim knowing all the boys like, bro, these boys are winning right now, man. I was in, when I was in college, man. We won four national titles. You know? oh, so, so I already know that thing was lit. Oh, my freshman year we won basketball. My sophomore year we won football and basketball. I'm like, bro, it's a wrap. <laughs> oh yeah, well, you, you was on a thousand then. Oh, oh my God, yeah. Come on, man. I, if I would, if only I would have knew, man. That, that you know the management wouldn't be where it was supposed to be. <laughs> no, yeah, man, it's all good. I don't get into that though. I'm, I'm, I'm going to rent, you know. <laughs> yeah, so some of the guys that I know, um, only thing I still to this day, the only thing I know about uh UCL, not UCL, like USC uh film school is John Singleton went there, and that's mm-hmm. one of my favorite directors. So George, that's all I written know about. George Lucas went there too. Oh, for real? Yeah, a lot. Of, I mean, Ryan Johnson. I mean, Ryan Coogler. Like a lot of people went there. Dang, man, I ain't know that. How about because the thing I was gonna ask you: Why would you even uh, go to school when you can just probably just ri- rise through the ranks and try to uh, become a uh, director in the long run? Or what made you just choose that path instead of just trying to uh, grind your way up to the top? Or it just helps to have on your resume. Or it just helps. That's a big thing because you can learn what you learn at USC. You can learn anywhere. Okay. The technical stuff, you know. You okay. Gotta, I think of where I was at at the time in terms of like experience, really. You know what I'm saying? It was more like I can go to New York and spend the next 
you know, X years like going on a path that's pushing you more towards, you know, being a line producer, being a, a first AD. Like again, like I, I was more interested in like the writing, directing part of it. So it's it's a path, but it's it's a it's a tricky path. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like uh, any PAs, like like PAs I talk to on set, I tell them like you can't be too good. You know what I'm saying? Like because they'll be a PA for years. Like you know, it's PAs that we had on our set that have been PAs for years and like, you know, normally the directors don't even talk to you at all, you know? And so like, you know, you have conversation. They're like, man, I, I never even talked to a director before. You know, you're like, what? <laughs> but I, I get it. I get it. Cause they, you know, directors, they, they got so much going on. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, it's not a, it's a very circuitous path to getting from being a PA to being a director. And so like, that was my only real viable option that I saw that I had other than film school because I I really felt like I was just freestyling all the time. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I, I, didn't have, I, didn't, I didn't have a lot of equipment. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't know any actors. I didn't have like I didn't have access to stuff to actually make a lot of short films. I mean again this is way before iPhone. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like the resources weren't quite the same. Well it's not way before iPhone. iPhone was out. But the but it's not advanced. Yeah, the level of mm. technical, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, wizards yeah. can do with an iPhone compared to them is not the same, you know? So, yeah. So I, I was like, man, I'm just freezing. I need, to, I need to go and be around filmmakers. I need to go and be around people who, you know, I can learn from, like, the osmosis of, like, being around a bunch of filmmaker so I was like let me apply to film school like you know you're gonna learn from your classmates and even to this day like I learned a lot more from my classmates that I went to school with than my teachers not to say that some of the teachers weren't fired because I did learn a lot from some of the teachers but you learn by just like being on the sets over and over like, mm-hmm. oh they nasty like you know what I'm saying and then you realize you're like okay like it's not as intimidating as I thought it was before I got there you know what I'm saying and so it's like for me it was more like what's the fastest way to actually improve my filmmaking skills, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm trying to actually like, you know, go in the hyperbolic time chamber and get better at it, you know? And the fastest mm-hmm. thing I saw was like, all right, let me go to, let me try to go to, you know, try to go to film school. And so like when I got accepted into USC, I'm like, all right, well, shit, obviously I'm, if it's the number one film school in the world, I'm, I'm in that thing. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> I'm in there, you know, so I, so, you know, I, I felt like I would learn the most, you know, just being immersed in that environment, you know what I'm saying? So, and I wouldn't, I would not suggest film school to everybody, you know, I think it's very much like a case by case, like do it make sense. But for me, it made sense because like I ain't around film people. I, don't mm-hmm. really, I got like one camera and it's quickly getting outdated. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it seemed like, like it was very helpful. And then you went there, of course, getting connections with other people and stuff like that. That definitely became beneficial to you in the long run. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like my writer partner, dude, I write with, I, it was just my classmate at USC, you know. So, see, you know, <laughs> like that alone, you know, helped me kind of start a career. You know what I'm saying? Like just having classmates, like a lot of people who worked on Tyrone went to USC with me, right? Like, you know, my you know, like uh, it was a it was a very much a, a, a classmate kind of uh, movie. You know what I mean? One of our our editor cut all my stuff at USC. Not mm-hmm. all, of it, most of it. You know, uh, most of the big stuff. You know what I'm saying? She cut she cut the movie. You know what I'm saying? We were mm-hmm. she, it was a few semesters ahead of me at USC. You know, my writing partner who co-wrote the script went to USC. One of our sound editors was my home, my homie from USC. A lot of, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people on the crew were like just my classmates, you know what I'm saying? And they're like, I grew up making music with the composer. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was my homie from Denver. Yeah. It was very like homegrown um uh kind of situation. And I wouldn't have knew, you know, I wouldn't have met any of those people had I went to US if I had not gone to USC. So for me, it, it worked out. It worked out well, you know what I mean, in terms of those relationships that I made with my classmates. And that's fine that you uh, you got them doing so many other things with film, 
with the film that you did, which we're gonna uh talk about too. But what led you to uh and I know in that industry you can be the dopest thing in the industry, but you need it's it's sometimes it takes luck too to get oh. to, to some uh, get to some of these places. So how did you end up getting on uh Creed too? That's Becoming a writer. That's the luck you mean. That's the luck right there. You know what I'm saying? Because Creed 2 was like pure serendipity in terms of I, I went to USC with Steve. The director of Creed 2 was like the homie from USC. So when I was getting to USC, he was leaving. We the same age, but he went as soon as he as soon as he graduated, I'm actually a year older than him, but like the, <laughs> the year he graduated college, he went straight to film school. I graduated and I spent three years playing video games. I didn't go back to film school. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. by the time I got to film school, Steve was about to graduate. Okay. So there's only so many black people at USC. So you meet, socially, you meet the black people at USC. And so I actually PA'd on one of the first sets I ever been on was like a, 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 a thing he was directing. So I PA'd on it. So that's how I got to know him. And then socially, I got to know him. And so like, you know, we kind of didn't see each other for a while when he graduated because, you know, he was out trying to make his first movie, which he did. And so I, I ended up reconnecting with him when I was about to graduate, funny enough. Uh, so a couple of years later, I ended up reconnecting with him. And one of the producers on Tyrone is, is who reconnected me with him, funny enough. Um, so I, who went to USC with us? So like one of the producers is like, you know, one of my cohorts, he was in a producing program, but we were there at the same time. Mm -hmm. So he produced Steve's first movie. You know, so, you know, there's two Steve's, but they both went to USC. But like one of them. Yeah, I got like, you, I got you. One of, Steve Love produced Steve Cable's movie first oh. movie out of USC because we were all like basically at USC at the same time. So they graduated, they made a, a small indie film. And Steve Love was like, bro, let me connect you. Like, bro, you got to chop it up with Steve Cable, man. Y'all got to link again because, like, you know, he saw the short that I did. And so he wanted us to kind of all reconnect. So I had actually went, met met Cape at like a Starbucks, you know, some fluke shit. <laughs> and it's been a while, let's chop it up, man. Steve told me to hit you, you know, so I mean, we go to a Starbucks and we just talking for like four hours. Like we just, just chilling all day. And I just sent him at the end, he was like, you know, he he was had just made his movie. So he's, you know, trying to figure out his next movie. And you kind of hopefully go up and up like that. So he was like, man, send me some scripts, you know what I'm saying? And so I had just happened to have a lot of scripts. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So I sent him, you know, I sent him some scripts. Didn't think nothing about it, you know. Then maybe like six months later, he hit me back on some like, you know, I'm gonna think I'm gonna take this Creed Two job. I'll put your name in the hat. I was like, oh shit, okay. Like I ain't think nothing of it because it was just like, I ain't gonna get this Creed job, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I had did um. I had got this fellowship, Universal Fellowship, so like a screenwriting fellowship at Universal. So I, I had got it. So that my year with Universal was coming to an end. Basically, right, right before he took the Creed job, I had just finished a few months before that, my year-long fellowship with Universal, screenwriting fellowship. And so basically, like the MGM, they called up Universal. And they was like, man, what's up with the old dude? They was like, man, he just did our program, man. We fuck with him, you know. Like, <laughs> they like said like things, and then I, we had just sold a TV show to Macro, who produced Tyrone, and so we okay. had a relationship with Macro, and so they called Charles King, and then Charles King was like, man, we just bought a show, like we fuck with him, you know. Mm -hmm. And then Steve was like, you know, look, man, by the time y'all close a deal of a bigger, a bigger um writer, we will just have a draft for you, cause you know it could take weeks if not months to like close the deal points of it you know so like he's like look man you get a big writer yada 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 trust me like we'll we'll bring you a draft and like give us you know what i'm saying it was like all right man <laughs> like whatever you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. i think part of it was because a lot of serendipity obviously was because i happen to know the director who took the job 
for whatever reason, I randomly just met with him and sent him some scripts earlier that year. I didn't even think he read them. And so it's like, man, what are the odds that like I just connected with him and I just sent him some scripts and then he liked them enough to like suggest that he wanted me to write it, you know? And then, That's crazy. And then like just the odds of just like the serendipity of I just got out, I just did a fellowship with Universal. So like Sarah Scott, like the VP of development at Universal, like actually picked up the phone when they called, like, who is this dude? They're like, man, he just did our program. Like, you know, I had a little bit of cosign from people. So I wasn't just like somebody out the street. Mm -hmm. the movie, this happened in December, and the movie came out the next Thanksgiving. So they were super behind the eight ball. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they was kind of desperate. That's the other factor of it, right? Like the time of it was like, you know. They were desperate for Creed too? Man, it was December, and they had, you know, no director. You know what I'm saying? Like they, like, they had to, like, get the ball moving. You know what I'm saying? It's December. Mm. Like, uh, we need, they wanted to come out, you know, Thanksgiving the next mm. year. Like, we got to get a script ASAP that he, that, that Steven want to, you know, want to shoot or whatever. So, yeah, you know, it was just like, they were so behind the eight ball in terms of timing, you know, that it was just like whatever. It's like you know, we just we're gonna give you one draft. If we don't like it, I guess it, you know we'll go back to the drawing board. But like it's just like come back with a draft, like you know, top of the year type shit. It's like, all right, I'll be back. You know, we'll be. And then Tony, you know, what I'm saying my writing partner, he ghost wrote it with me. You know, what I'm saying like, and it's that was you know uh, just a whole scramble to write that shit. But just the, just the circumstances of getting it was like. A lot of love, you know what I'm saying? Like just yeah. that that sounds like some God timing right there, man. A lot of love in God's timing right there, man. So that that just really crazy that uh all that just happened at one time for you. It's going up and up for you. So yeah, man, that's that's what's up. I, I just surprised by they just having a hard time with Creed too, as big as Creed was. So I mean, like, it, 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 because you gotta understand, like, it's it's at that point, like, the actor schedules gotta line up, you know. Yeah, so yeah. Like, it, it, it's like a lot of just logistics that go into it, you know what I'm saying? It's like you gotta get, and then like you gotta understand, like, all these directors turn the movie down because Ryan was doing Black Panther. Oh yeah, that but nobody, yeah. nobody want to come behind Ryan. And do they gonna be like, where, what, like, who is it, like, like if you made. Creed 2 without Ryan, people are gonna ask, like, where's the guy who did the first one? Why he not doing it? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? A lot of black directors didn't want to, you know, like it was a, you know, it's like a wave of young black directors who apparently like all turned it down, you know what I'm saying? Including Steven. Steven had already turned it down. And they came back to him, right? Because nobody want to follow Ryan. It's like what is this like. It's a thankless job to do. Like, like imagine if Ryan Coogler didn't direct Black Panther 2. Okay. And they were like, all right, Black Panther 2, oh, okay, we're ready for another. We're like, okay, it's not going to be Ryan Coogler. They're going to be like, what? I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, Get Out 2, directed by somebody not named Jordan Peele. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, yeah, mess up everything. Mm -hmm. A hit movie, and now the sequel to the hit movie is, is going to be a different director. It's like, People weren't interested in like, like ah, nah, I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a very like tough role to kind of step into from a perception standpoint. And so like Steve didn't want to do it. Like you know he wanted to do his own thing. He wanted to make his own movie. You know what I'm saying? So like mm -hmm. they came back around and they kind of offered him a little bit more leverage, I guess. You know what I'm saying? So you know like you'd be surprised how time fly by trying to put stuff together. You know. Well, shoot, man, it looked like it was some luck on his side, too. So, man, that's what's up, man. But well, let me ask you this. So, what was it like? Now, one movie, I'm not even going to lie to you. I was very critical of kind of like, man, why are they doing this? Oh, yeah. I mean, Ace Jam 2. You must have talked, hey. talked to the one or something. I'm laughing because it's like. No, no, I ain't talked to him about it. I ain't talked to him at all, man. I was just like, bro, when I seen, because me, I always uh, see stuff before they even start making the movie, and I'd be like, bro, why are they making that movie? 
And I love Space Jam so much, dog. That that is my movie. Jo- Michael Jordan, one of my favorite players, the GOAT. Guy Jordan's all that. It's top tier. And I hate it's almost like making the Godfather and somebody else just changing everything around it. And so that's how I look at that movie. So how was it like working uh with uh LeBron and how you uh uh end up working with them? I I I've never met LeBron in my life and I worked on two of his movies. Wow, so even with uh shooting stars? I've stood in a circle with LeBron and he ain't talked to me because he didn't know who I was. Well, of course. I, you know, like I, you know, I'm not like I, I was there to try to recruit Don Cheadle to be in Tyrone. Like I, I went to set to try to get Don Cheadle in Tyrone. This is a long time ago. Mm-hmm. So I mean, we, um, yeah, <laughs> See, I can't, I can't go too deep on a space. <laughs> no, 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 you ain't gotta go. Well, we can talk about uh, if you Google ahead. it, you see some developments in the, in the Space Jam in terms of you know it's had two directors. Mm-hmm. A lot of writers. Uh, so, you know, I mean, Space Jam was, uh, I mean, in the beginning, I was super excited to do it because I love Space Jam. I seen it like three times in the theaters when it came out. I, I wanted to be in the NBA and I was that age. Like, you know what I'm saying? Then we all. <laughs> target audience, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I, I, I um, when they asked us if we wanted to, 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 to jump on it, you know what I'm saying? Like, we were like, hey, you know, but I mean, the simple way to put it is like, it wasn't a lot of synergy between the filmmakers, the studios, the like, the, it was not a line. No, I'll just say that, you know, in terms of like, uh, yeah, I got you. The, the parties in control, but it was a lot of fun working on it still, you know, the movie didn't really turn out good, but it was a lot of fun uh, working on it. Cause you know, I got to work with Ryan, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Ryan's super cool. Got to work with, uh, you know, his little brother, Keenan was one of the writers. Okay. On the, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Keenan was one of the writers of Creed Three. You know what I'm saying? So Keenan's a great writer. His little brother's a really great writer. Um, worked on Creed Three. Um, you know, Terrence Nance, who was the first director. It was two directors. That's a different story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you good, you good. The first director was Terrence Nance, who's like crazy. Like he, this show, Random Acts of Flyness on HBO is his show. For real? So, okay. Okay. He he he's a monster. And, you know, yeah. So every everybody involved was like like Ryan, Terrence Nance. It's like these they're like super creative, like stupidly talented. You know what I'm saying? So that even though that movie kind of got went off the rails a little bit, uh, the people that were working on it was all like super cool. You know what I'm saying? And so like I actually I actually enjoyed working with them. I think like the experience got kind of got drawn out a little bit, but that wasn't their fault. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we ended up being trapped on that movie for a little bit just because of like the, the way it was kind of set up. We had so many steps on our contract. Mm-hmm. So we, we had to work on it for a while, but you know, but when, you know, like when we were actually like in the rooms, like and, and chopping it up, it was always fun though. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. Uh, no, that's kind of crazy. You worked on two things with him, but you ain't never uh, even talked to him. The thing, because I'm not going to lie, I, I, I didn't even give Space Jam 2 even a chance. I was like, man, I'm not watching that. And then I just watched it one day. I was like, it's not Space Jam, but it's different. I was just like, it's just something different. That's the only thing I can say about it. It was just different. I, 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 that's all I can say. But one thing I did enjoy What's that shooting stars that um that came out, man? I truly enjoyed. The only thing I was mad about, with really, it was two things. I didn't know Scoop Henderson was playing uh Ramon, his partner. Oh yeah, I, like I, yeah, we we actually worked on shooting stars probably like twenty seventeen. You know, so it was a long. We worked on that. That was one of the first uh rewrite jobs we got you know what i'm saying so it was like so it was, i was like oh shit they making it like because you know like they you know we didn't know if they was ever gonna really make that you know yeah because i wish i i just wish it was a not a movie but i wish it was like a mini series because i i just like the uh 
the way him and uh, all his partners came up, man. And I felt like you just trying to crumble all this in two hours. It's like you missing a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. Nah, I mean, that was fun, though. We got to work with Terrence Winter on that. The producer uh, was Terrence Winter, who did Boardwalk Empire. He, you know, big oh, writer, you know what I'm saying? It's like a triple OG writer, you know? So we actually got to work with Terrence Winter. Again, that was probably like 2017, something like that, when we, when we was work, working on that. And so it's like, you know, you look up and like five years later, they're like, all right, we about to go shoot this. I was like, oh, word. You know, so like, you know, you know, people rewrite scripts all the time. So we didn't actually know if like they had rewritten it, you know. So we was kind of surprised that like, oh, like they work, they, you know, we're still, our draft is still like, they're still working, you know. They they did rewrite it, but it still had a lot of our stuff in it. Like, you know, we, we were credited on the movie because they used, you know, a lot of our drafts still. So, you know, it's like, oh shit, like that was like a pleasant surprise. Cause like, you know, you damn near forgot about that movie and then they popped up with like, oh, we making it. And I was like, oh shit, okay. You know, so uh, you know, I, I legitimately had no, like I never went to set, like I didn't have any in, you know, in terms of like. Like Creed, I got to go to set and be there and kind of see it. Mm-hmm. You know, shooting stars, it was like, they just like, I'm going to see it like everybody else. I'm, I wonder how it's going to turn out. You know, I'm going to go. Man, I'm go. learning a lot from you right now. Cause I'm thinking that, uh, like, y'all can, y'all write it out, then they like it, then you can just see certain things about it. But you just seen I it just like, how we I could have, but like, by the time they were making it, I was like working on Tyrone. Like, you know, like, again, that by the time they made it, we had wrote that maybe like, Five years, five years, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we, we wrote that before Space Jam, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow. we worked on that before we worked on Space Jam. So, so they like, basically had it on the shelf. Because it's both Spring Hill, you know what I'm saying? They was at Warner mm-hmm. Brothers. By the time the movie came out, it's all Peacock. It's at Universal. They th- That deal wasn't even at Warner Brothers anymore, you know? Because, like, if you think about, like, obviously, uh, you know, uh, at the time when, like, you know, uh, uh, Space Jam and that they would Spring Hills deal was with Warner Brothers. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it took so long that the movie came out with Universal. You know what I'm saying? So they deal like mm-hmm. you know either expired or they like read up. But you know, however they deal ended, it ended and they got a new deal at a new place. So you know, we if, if we wanted to like be involved and go see it and we had the time, we could have like went to check it out. Oh, okay. Well, they, they, don't leave, they don't just be like icing it out, like you know what I'm saying. It ain't it ain't dirty like that. Like if you wanna if you wanna be involved in terms of just getting to see it and go to set and stuff like that, you can. Yeah, man. That's why I said, man. I'm learning as I go when you tell me stuff. So I learn. I'm just learning from you. But we down to your movie, big time movie. Oh. Tell me about it, man. It exists. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> It was fun making it, man. Like, you know, it was we sold it. Mm-hmm. Like again, I said, you know, it took, Big time. it took a long time to like get made, you know what I mean? Like we sold it probably like we sold it in 2018. And then we were shooting by 2020 because it took like two years to cast it. And then mm-hmm. COVID happened. And so it's like it took a long time to cast, you know. And so by the time we got it cast it, COVID happened. It's like damn. You know, so like Jamie had a window that was created in large part because of COVID. So we shot it during COVID. Mm-hmm. You know, so we shot it like uh, December 2020, you know, which was like full peak COVID. COVID. Boy. So we shot it in a, like a bubble, you know, like an NBA style bubble. You know, they rented out a hotel and the whole thing. So in, in, in a weird way, if it wasn't for COVID, we, you know, we might not have got the window, the little baby window we got with Jamie. We we were able to get it in large part because so many productions were shutting down, and so I was like, "Oh, now you got time." You know. So, yeah. oh my fault. I about to say so, but uh, they cloned Tyrone. I'm trying to see was Jamie uh originally supposed to be in there? That's who you wanted uh day one. I mean, that's why that was like a dream casting, but. We- <laughs> A, I mean, we, it was a much smaller movie, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we mm-hmm. were trying to get it like on some indie shit, you know? Yeah. So, I, he's not the first actor that we, we, we talked to other actors, you know, like I just said, I have, was trying to 
caught Don Cheadle on the set of Space Jam. That's the, the only day I ever went to Space Jam. I was trying to talk to Don Cheadle. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and uh, you know, shout out to Don Cheadle. He's like a great actor. But, um, you know, he, he ended up passing. Great is an understatement. <laughs> yeah. he, he ended up passing, but like, you know, we we when it was a a, a smaller movie, you know. I wouldn't have even like it's kind of like Jamie not even on your radar because it's like it's like saying like man let me let me try to cast Will Smith in this or something. you know what I mean it's like you don't even oh, think yeah. about it because like the scale that I'm making this movie for at least presuming to make this movie for is like certain actors don't come up in the conversation because like that you can't afford them you know what I mean yeah. you don't want to make them for this budget you know and just serendipitously going back to like, you know, I happen to know one of our other producers, one of the other producers on the movie is like, he runs Jamie's company now. And so like, you know, uh, we, you know, we ended up like, you know, basically writing a script for Jamie in exchange for Jamie being in the movie, right? You know, like mm -hmm. he had a handshake deal, like he had like this, movie that he wanted a script for. I was like, oh, you know. So it, in a crazy roundabout way, like once Jamie, once it, once Jamie was kind of, we kind of got Jamie's interest a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like that's when the studio was like, okay, well, this is no longer a small movie. You know what I'm saying? Like the- Yeah, the they just side, raised the budget. Mm -hmm. Jamie made the budget. I mean, one, Jamie would have cost the majority of our original budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We we literally could not afford him the, the way we were going to originally make the movie. But like once we went back and, and, and partnered with Nick, because we were going to do it just with Macro, and then it, they, they, they budgeted it out, realized like, okay, it's going to cost a little bit more. At that point, um, we, um, at that point, you know, when we realized that it was going to cost a little bit too much, um, we went back, ultimately ended up with Netflix as a as a partner. And when Netflix was like, Jamie's interested, like, okay, well, obviously we gonna we gonna get that. <laughs> <laughs> you can get them, but like, yeah, we ain't quite got the budget for them. They were like, you do now. You know what I'm saying? That was basically how that worked. He was like, don't worry about Jamie. He'll be in the movie if he wants to be. And so that's kind of how that kind of ended up playing out but like you know he he he's definitely somebody I always wanted you know I always imagined he would be amazing but I never mm -hmm. thought like we would be able to you know what I'm saying like hell yeah I would love you know it's like, exactly I, like was Denzel the first choice it's like yeah. you know like if you could get somebody like Denzel every movie could use Denzel but like exactly every movie doesn't reach out to Denzel because every movie doesn't think that Denzel will answer the phone you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like that. It's like Jamie was like amazing and perfect for it, you know, but like I would have never imagined that we would be able to, you know, actually get him to, to say yes. And then Netflix would like pay his fee. And you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that was definitely like a, oh shit moment, you know? I, I need you to confirm something, man, because watching the movie, because for one, I was excited when they, uh, for one, I didn't know you were making the film until uh probably like two months before it was coming out I was like oh okay because i was like man seeing john we with the uh grill in his mouth man i was like hey bro this feels like the most southern thing i'm watching because <laughs> like every everything that was going on around it but i need you to confirm this now i seen like other things it say it was heavily influenced by tuskegee and it could be other things too but I need to hear it out of your mouth that it was heavily influenced by Tuskegee. Yes I mean, or no? I mean, come on, man. Like, how could it? I mean, there's a character named Frog in the movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. That was going to be one of the next ones, too. Okay. I said we almost <laughs> named a character really young. If you really know, you know. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey, man, you answered a lot right there. <laughs> Come on, man. How could it not be? You know what I'm saying? It's 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 naturally you just gonna draw from like personal experience, you know what I'm saying? Especially like kind of making that neighborhood. You know, I'm looking, I'm thinking about like Tuskegee, I'm thinking about like areas of Montgomery, like I'm merging them together, you know what I'm saying? Like 
you got the yellow stove. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, you know, it's like naturally, you, I mean, but this is like human nature, you know what I'm saying? To draw from like things that you've been around, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I had to, I had to throw the frog in there. <laughs> oh yeah, man. That, that, I thought that drum was fine. And the crazy thing, I think, uh, John Bouye, uh, main character name was Fontaine. Yeah. That's my cu- first cousin name. So I was like, bro, uh, that, that, I was like, man, that's fine. Right there. Cause well, of course, when the uh, movie about to come out, I'm thinking his name is uh Tyrone or whatnot. But that's why I had to ask that question, man, because you know, like when a movie come out and it's like a movie like yours, everybody got these conspiracy theories and all that, like, oh, this is what the movie is about. But oh, uh, and I remember they had some on Facebook, like, oh, he was referencing the yellow store. Oh, this is frog and this is such and such. And that I was like, if I ever get the opportunity, bro, I'm just going straight up and ask, like, bro, is it? Come on. I mean, like, frog was like everywhere when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like, the first name I thought of was frog for that character. <laughs> like, like, frog, you know what I'm saying? And like, when you when you sit with the production designer and you coming up with like the color scheme, it's like you you go on naturally just think of like evocative imagery, you know what I'm saying? So it's like the color of the glen, like home is yellow, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Danger is purple, like complementary colors, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you watch the movie, like anything associated with the underground is purple. You know, the hair cream is purple. Like, you know, they're like all this, you know, all these like the grape drink is purple. Like the, you know what I mean? And so it's like you have, you know, when you when you try to think of like evocative imagery, you going you gonna just go back to places that you grew up seeing, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh man, that that's what's up, man. Cause I like that bothered me. That was probably like the only thing because I I of course I enjoyed the movie, man. I enjoyed everything about it. And I just like that was the only thing that bothered me. I was like, bro, what? It gotta be. But I, I just when I don't know something, bro, I just gotta ask, and it just bothered me until I get like the actual answer. But thank you for uh, answering that. But the one thing that, uh, of course, you being from the south, we love southern music, and I ain't just talking about any type of southern music, southern hip hop. For me, having older brother having an older brother and definitely older cousin i listened to certain things in the 90s that i wasn't supposed to listen to and it's definitely that one right there my dad actually bought me this cd <laughs> when i was younger and he was just like the boy oh, yeah. Love. come on man. yeah i was like but the southern albums man that i wanted to add i wanted to ask you just all this like Three Six Mafia, Outkast, UGK, Project Pat, man. Even from some from um uh, Alabama, like Deuce Conrad, Dirty. Oh, bro, <sighs> that's like my biggest. What I hate is like I don't know who you know, so I don't even know the. I tried to get Dirty in the movie. I tried to get a Dirty song in the movie, and it's like I was running into like dumb shit, and we was running out of time, and so like. You know, I wish I would have pushed a little harder because for a long time in the movie, I had hit the flow. You know, I was like, I got the little gump, you know, a little gump in there. So for a long time in the, in, in post and cut, we had hit the flow in this scene, but like some goofy shit happened with like just the UMG because like they, they, it might have been like somebody writes on this. I, I don't want to fuck the story up because yeah, it's like other people like go and source songs and track songs and, and, and like get clearances and like, and we could we could have afforded the song. That's why I was like, "What's going on?" You know what I'm saying? Like, it was something was happening, allegedly. I mean, like, I'm still not sure. I believe mm-hmm. it. But allegedly, something was going on. So I was I, I was trying to get dirty in there. The clearance wasn't like super expensive, so I felt like we could have afforded it. But they came back to me and said something something happened with something. And I was like, "Damn," you know. But I got a lot of because I you know I got to take that shit to trial. I got trial time in there, you know. But see, oh my. it's funny because. Ironically, I would have had to find somewhere else for the dirty song to go because the first half of that scene got cut out the movie. And so like mm-hmm. the, it had dirty in it, and then the other part had trial time. So I had a song from 
Mobile, something from the gump in that in the scene where they went to, when they go to Isaac. And the part where Dirty was in, where you heard Hit the Flow, actually got cut out the movie. So I would have had to find a different place for it anyway. But and I think that's part of I, I feel like, you know, like they I was part of it's like you 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 got you got limited music budget and you got all these needle drops. And so like they be trying to make you, you know, that was one of the bigger fights of trying to, you know. Get the songs that I wanted, especially certain cues. They don't be willing to pay for it. You know, that's a different story. But man, that's so lame, man. Because I can only imagine, like when that uh club scene come and I hear hit the flow, bro. I probably would have lost it, dog. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, or um, I rest had, in peace. I had, I had to put that one dollars at though, you know. But uh, you know, I had I had to get credit now. Like so, when we did the soundtrack, man. Like you know, again, like we didn't have a huge budget for the soundtrack. You know, um, we have Republic Records who, who, you know, it's like the biggest label, really. They got Drake, they got, you know, Taylor Swift, you know, I think they like oh. the big band. Um, but uh, so Republic did the soundtrack, but we didn't have a lot of money for the soundtrack. I didn't realize this at the time. You know, this is kind of like a learning, a learning curve type thing of like realizing just how much clearances cost. I didn't realize how much our music budget was like. I would have argued for it like triple the budget if I'd have realized like one song could like I was like, oh shit, okay. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You got a, you got a budget and you realize how much artists charge for certain songs. You're like, damn, we got like 30 needle drops in this movie. How you know, so you really gotta like be judicious with the money. But you know, mm -hmm. I think it's trying to find every way to, and it's a couple of other like Bama artists that's like more kind of indie and stuff, you know what I'm saying, that, that are in like the background of certain scenes and stuff that I was just trying to like, hey, you got a homeboy who, hey man, you got a homeboy with some music, let me hear it. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's a couple of people like that, you know what I'm saying? My homeboy uh, kind of put me on a couple of people that he, that that kind of local artists, but like, you know, just put it, let's put it, and, and, and it's not like heavily featured, nothing like that, like, you know, they might recognize it, but it's like, all right, you know, if I can put some local stuff in the, in the background, I will. Mm -hmm. And, you know what I'm saying? And so if you look at the credits of the songs, you know, you'll see a lot of like local Bama acts and stuff like that. And like, these are songs that are like almost inaudible. You really got to be looking for them. But like, you know, when there's music coming out of car speaker in the background, it might be like some local artist, you know. Um, but like, you know, with Crit, you know what I'm saying? Specifically like Pat, like, I was trying to, I had, I, I got to get them in the movie too, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's not set in Alabama. It's, you don't know where to, it's not mm -hmm. set in the city. It never says where it is. It's just somewhere in the deep south. So it's like, naturally I'm like, I got to get paid. No matter what, I got to get paid somehow, you know what I'm saying? So I had Pat Tempt in the like post and we were editing the movie. Like I had like the whole Mr. Don't Play was like Tempt in everywhere. Right. Bro, uh, that, that, that whole album is like, my whole childhood, bro. You yeah, shouldn't yeah. a ten year old is not is not supposed to know all the lyrics to this album, dog. <laughs> the day that album came out, man, I was in Georgia, Washington, and one of my best friends in my neighborhood was this Korean dude. You know what I'm saying? So me and my homie Danny, my sister, my older sister, like we all went to the store, and I got a copy. Danny bought a copy, and my sister bought it. We, 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 each of us bought our own CD the day that shit came out. Like just. I mean, that goes without saying. Mr. Don't Play go without saying. So of course I had to like try to try to find a way to get the pad and, and, and like ended up chopping it up with Teddy Walton, who was like a producer. He produced some shit on Kendrick's album, you know, he produced I think Love and God on a damn. And then mm -hmm. he, he produced crew, you know what I'm saying? Like uh Gold Link. Oh, okay. Producer Travis Scott, like he Teddy Walton produced for everybody, but he had uh some pat in the stash, and I was like, bro. I need it. Like I, I gotta have it, bro. So like the scene that he gets, you know, killed in the beginning is like Pat. And I'm like, right, mm -hmm. yeah, it's Pat. But and so Pat and Crit were definitely, you know, two of the people I was trying to get to. You know, it's only a few artists that really like responded. Like this artist named Saba, who's super cool, responded. You know, who's really like just fucking with the movie and like wanted to do it. You know, what I'm saying and like Crit, funny enough, is like one of the most responsive. Like I reached out to his team, got back a few days later, set him up with the Netflix people, 
I, I told Netflix, I don't care what you do, make it happen. Man, like three days later, I had, you know, like, cause he on the soundtrack, you know. Mm -hmm. um, he, he sent me that song back in like three days. You know, I was like, oh, my dog. Like, <laughs> like, you know? Cause like, trust me, you get the run around from a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, you reach out, hey, I would love to work with you and shit. And one reason or another, they came, it might be their label, or it might be them, they might not be interested. And so for Crit, like reaching out, like he was immediately like, hey man, I'm with it. And then like a couple of days later, he's like, how, how you rocking with this? I was like, bro. Yeah, bro, it wouldn't even matter. If if, if he would have sent me something, bro, it don't even matter, bro. It's you. It's you. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, bro, <laughs> like, how you, is that cool? How you, I'm like, bro, you just sent me an original song. <laughs> this is crazy, you know what I'm saying? Like that was one of the craziest parts was like the funnest part of everything was working on the music. So, you know, getting you know getting the artists who did actually like kind of work on it like it was like super fun, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So man, that was like man, just my whole childhood was just based on that. Pretty much, we grew we grew up in the same place, so of course, like the same music or whatnot. So I was going to ask you this, like one of my, uh, a couple of my last questions. Let me see how I want to uh, put this, because say we talking about Project Pack, get it green or Mr. Don't Play? If you had to get rid of one, which, no, it not, I don't even want to make it sound like that. If you had to listen to one for the rest of your life, which one would it be? Mr. I love getting it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I got to go miss it, though. Oh, yeah, man. Because I promise you, dog. I, every That's week, like one of my favorite albums of all time. Yes. Bro, when I tell you every single Monday, I play Life We Live to Work, bro. <laughs> I love that song so much. <laughs> but it's let me so add. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying, it's so beautiful. You feel me? Like, like, oh, like, yeah, man. <laughs> You know, I mean, you gotta play like you got. I mean, I listen to anytime I go to the gym, like you know, what I'm saying, like, Mr. Always comes back. And I'll tell you another secret one that I always play Doubt Me Now. <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna doubt me now, but like, Doubt Me Now took over Montgomery in 03. It took over, it was like Get Rich and Die Trying, which took over the world. Mm -hmm. The other album that took over that year was Doubt Me Now. I, I, that's that's a um, that's a little known one. Like unless you like really from the deep south or really mm -hmm. three six like that. But like Dalman now is a you know is a super a white classic. You know what I'm saying? I well answer this for me. I'm about to say I'm just gonna name some artists and you just tell me which one you choosing over them. They just plain and simple. I know it ain't saying and these are all artists I respect. It ain't like I'm saying these. People are better. UGK or Outkast? Outkast is my favorite group of all time. I tried, I, to, I tried desperately to get Andre 3000 to do a track in this movie. So much so that he came. I, I went to a show last night, New Blue Sun. The, mm -hmm, the flute. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I literally just went to a show last night. But uh, he came to the lab with the flute, watched the movie. You know, I tried to get him to. I tried my best to get him in this movie some way, shape, or form. If you would have did that, man, you would have uh, hit legendary status because you can't get Andre to do nothing, man, if he don't want to do it, man. Yeah, trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I so, we, so we in the green. I always say uh, Outkast is the greatest group ever. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I, favorite I, musical artist ever. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, well, we can go to this one. Uh, Look, to, but you know that was easy. Well, this is just albums with uh Outkast. You got that Southern player listed. It's a you tie. Got a Quimini. Tie. Or AT Aliens. It's a tie. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what. It's AT Aliens and a Quimini depending on my mood. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I was driving, first day to set. Uh. First day to set, I listened to Liberation while I was driving to set. So, like, I, you know, first day on my first movie, you know what I'm saying, we in Atlanta, I'm, I'm, I'm on the way to set, on the way to sound stages, and I just, like, played Liberation. 
and I just put it on repeat. I played Liberation all the way to set. I just, I was just trying to like just get in that mindset. And and the, and when we we had music every day on set, we had these big speakers. And as soon as our last shot, even though technically it wasn't because we ended up doing reshoots and stuff, uh, and we had to shoot stuff in LA, but our, our original rap, where he was like, "Every that's a rap," you know what I'm saying? Like as soon as we mm-hmm. get rap, we played bombs over Baghdad. Oh, so y'all were lit. It was lit. Man. Well, hold on. This is my last question on for uh, uh, who cloned Tyrone. Then I'm gonna ask these last little few, and then we done. But I just found this out recently. You, I seen in the interview that you said you was uh, in the movie because that, that was gonna be one of my questions. I was like, man, why won't you be like Stan Lee in your movie and just make a little cameo I here and there? Want to be? Uh, you said my, you didn't want to be. No, nah, no. Nah, my my homeboy from LA. Hmm. Was supposed to be the the Cali, you know, the Cali homie, because um, he's you know, you know, super Cali, super Cali, hella, you know, what I mean? like mm-hmm. he had that Cali accent, that mm-hmm. very born and raised in LA kind of accent. But we had to move some days around the schedule, and, and you had to test in to be on set, so you had to be in quarantine for like two weeks before you could be on set. So when we moved the schedule around, he wasn't gonna be able to be in quarantine long enough. And so we had used basically every black PA, every every black person on the crew is in the movie somewhere. <laughs> as an extra, like because you know, you in COVID, so you ain't you 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 don't have as many people. And so, and it's just a hassle to, to test in, especially for extras. And so, you know, by that time it was like, man, like <laughs> This is gonna be you or 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 one of the stand ins. Everybody like, bro, you know you're gonna have to be in the shit. <laughs> so <laughs> my boy Tony, my, my writing partner, actually directed the last scene of the movie because, you know, it's like, I mean, I was there writing the script, but I kept fucking up the one line I had. I'm not an actor, so it's mm. like, like I think it was like uh that you, Tyrone. I'm like, man, because I remember you said you were trying to have that LA accent, and I was just looking, I was like. I no, I gave up on the LA accent. I, I yeah. gave up on it. I was like, I ain't even gonna try to. Ain't that you, Tyrone? Like, I was, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah. Folks, folks in LA probably would have called you out, man. This food doing too much. I was gonna dub it with my homeboy voice. I was gonna dub his voice in. You know? mm-hmm. Like, no, nah, no, nah, you just gotta keep your voice out, like, bro. So, I just tried to make it as neutral sounding as possible. Okay, well. Last two questions. I'm about to say, if I'm trying to see, well, it's going to be kind of hard for you to, uh, well, you can write for them, but what director would you like to uh, work with the most? Mm, And then same question going to be, what actor would you definitely want to work with in the future? Um, I mean, I would love to work with Quentin Tarantino. Um, oh. You know, I think if he, I, especially if he dropped that Kill Bill three. See, that's like a, a non story. He writes, you know, like this is his last movie, and he writes all his movies. So it's like, you know, you talk about like a, you know, pipe dream. A director who actually directs scripts written by other people. Cause like a lot of directors, they, they write their own stuff. So it's like, I mean, I would say probably like a Chris Nolan, obviously, you know what I mean? You know, or Denis, Denis or Chris Nolan. I about to say Chris Nolan would be just monster, man. That, that is easily one of my favorites right next to uh, Spike Lee, dog. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, because that Dark Knight series is just, I think that is up there as one of the greatest trilogies of all time, dog. I watched them movies so much. Yeah, I mean, I've seen The Dark Knight so many times. It's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> and what after you said you wanted to work with? Uh, oh, well, I didn't say that. I was just saying Denis Villeneuve. Oh, oh okay. Did, dude, I was saying two directors. I was saying Chris Nolan or Denis. But um, uh, actor, I mean, like Denzel, you know what I'm saying? Like, who, <laughs> who wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, who wouldn't want to work with Denzel? You know? Hey, man, you never know. You would be like, uh, I forgot. Oh, buddy, name man, he played in uh, oh, that Wu Tang, he played Rizza 
and uh, then he worked with Denzel. He was like, uh, Denzel White walked past him, and he was like, good film or whatnot. And then he, Denzel came back and shook his hand. I may be working in the movie with you, man. And next thing you know, they were working in the movie. So, hey, man, you never know. Never know. You know. And I hope hope that happened for you. But, man, let me tell you how much I appreciate you just for even doing this for me and uh, my YouTube channel, dog. I'm a big fan of yours. And I love the work that you're doing, man, of course. So, and you're just going to continue to do great things. And like I said, it said nominated, bro. You're going to win. I don't care what you're trying to say. Now, of course, you may not win everything, but directly you should win in writing, which I feel like uh, you got snubbed on the Oscars for original screenplay. Orig yeah, I think that's what it's called, original screenplay when you uh, run it up. That would have been dope. So hopefully if it come back around next year, they'll just throw it in there just because. Hey, you know. But your time I'm coming, dog. I always gotta make some something better, man. Just gotta just keep keep making stuff, man. Oh yeah, man. It's not a sprint. If it's to happen, it'll happen. You know? Well, let me spoiler alert, it's gonna happen one of these days. So man, I appreciate you and everything, dog. So thank you for just even blessing the pie, man. Oh man, that's and great. Man. for the whole Tuskegee man. <laughs> so just keep supporting this brother man and as always man we up out this thing all right man <laughs>